art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So a very big welcome to all of you this day as we gather as God's people. Yes, still restricted in our homes, but uh, nevertheless we are the church. And God's presence is with us, fills us, guides us, directs us. And we are so grateful. Grateful to have you uh, joining us today as we lift our hearts unto the Lord. A little bit about the lessons. I'm speaking on our epistle lesson, which is Philippians. It's one of my favorite passages. Uh, Psalm 23 is too, so I was really torn. But uh, Philippians passage talks about rejoicing in all things. There's ever a time in which uh, we're a people filled with uncertainty and anxiety. Uh, boy, now is it with COVID-19, with upcoming elections. There's lots to be concerned about. And so I hope that uh, the message today is helpful for you. I hope we're reminded that uh, in the midst of all that happens, we are called to rejoice and, and to not be anxious, but to turn our hearts, our, our burdens, our cares, our worries over to our Lord. I pray that we're able to do that and to have uh, whatever it is that might be heavy on your heart to be lifted uh, so that the joy would... Uh, would be so present in your hearts and in my hearts this day. Thank you again for joining us. We at this time like to uh, uh, turn it over to our music team as they share their gifts of music. God bless. Jesus And so we begin our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so to you, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we pause for a few moments of silence and self-examination. And so, most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us of all our sins. As a called ordained minister of the Church of Christ, by his authority, 
therefore declaring to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. doing here i was just up uh, on my way to a party at the luther glen farm i guess i have some time to spare <laughs> so have you guys ever been invited to a party maybe a birthday party or a christmas party these are all great parties now what did you have to do to prepare for this party maybe bring a gift or some food item these are all important things however the most important thing you did was probably make sure you actually went to the party and it was probably a bunch of fun this reminds me of a bible story my Bible must be around here somewhere. Found it. So in today's Bible story, Jesus tells us a story about how a king throws a wonderful party and invites lots and lots of people. However, some of these people don't attend. They're just a little too busy or maybe they don't think it's important. Now Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is just like a party. And the best part is that we're all invited to God's party. But just like other parties, we have to make sure we prepare. Now, how do we prepare for a party in the kingdom of God? The best way to prepare is by learning how to be at God's party. And we do this all the time. We do this by singing and praying and showing kindness to our neighbors and learning about new Bible stories. As we do all these things, we enjoy God's party right here in our lives. And as we do this, we can spread that joy to others and invite them to God's party too. Everybody's invited. Never forget that you are invited to the kingdom of God party. Speaking of parties, I'm already late. <laughs> I better go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. First lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25 starting with the first verse. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name, for you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. 
For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The 23rd Psalm The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The epistle lesson is from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, starting at the first verse. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved, 
I urge Euodia and I urge Sintish to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Our Gospel lesson for this 19th Sunday of Pentecost is from the 22nd chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, beginning with verse 1. Once more Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it, and they went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad, so the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man, a man who was there not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him out into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And so grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. And so let us pray. Lord, we thank you again this day that as we gather as your people, yes, still restrictive in our, our respective homes, Lord, that you are with us. It is your love and your presence that sustains us. Oh Lord, come, fill us that our hearts, our lives are truly overflow that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight. And this I pray. Amen. As I begin my sermon, I am painfully aware that, yes, let's just say 2020 has not been the best of years, yes? Suffice it to say, it's presented many pitfalls and challenges living through these past number of months. Whoever thought that a pandemic would literally shut down the entire world and change the way we live? Who ever thought we would be captive in our own homes? Let's just say that there's can be lots that can weigh heavy on our shoulders and upon our hearts. All I know is that as God's people, we were not meant to fret and worry and think dark thoughts. We were made for peace, for joy, for light, for love. Yes? St. Paul understood that. That's why he writes one of my most favorite passages from Philippians, when he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all that the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, present your requests with God. And he goes on to say, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds 
In Christ Jesus, our Lord. I love that passage. It's one of my most favorite, and it's one that burned deep in my heart and has uh, helped me through many a tough time over the years. The amazing thing is that St. Paul wrote these words from prison while he was in effect on death row. Can you believe that? We're told that when he penned this epistle, he was literally chained to a Roman guards, one on each side, and he was guarded day and night. And yet he could say, do not be anxious about anything. Wow. I think I would have been anxious under such circumstances, but not St. Paul. St. Paul tells us to rejoice. It takes a special kind of faith to proclaim joy in such dire circumstances. The kind of faith that comes from living in the center of God's will and in the center of God's love. You and I, we were made for such joy. So let me ask you, what is it that robs you of your joy? Is it worry about your future? That's the root of much of our anxiety, is it not? We're worried. We're worried about our future. Is this COVID-19 pandemic ever going to end? Will life ever return to normal, whatever that's going to look like? Ann Landers was asked long ago, what is the number one problem that people have? She said the number one concern of most people is anxiety. She said people are afraid, afraid of losing their health, afraid of losing their wealth, afraid of losing loved ones. She said people are afraid of life itself. I know she said that many years ago, but it's still so applicable today, is it not? Then I heard of a man who was worried, worried because he realized that he had nothing to worry about. Can you believe that? Really? Do you know of anyone who's like that? Anyone who'd worry about the fact that they don't have anything to worry about? Yes, some of us do fret over such minor things, do we not? It's the little things that often tie us up in knots, usually those little things that are easily fixable with time. Is that what is robbing you of your joy, anxiety about your future? I've heard it said that God made the world round so that we would never be able to see too far down the road. I like that. And it's so true because we can't see down that road. That itself is a cause of anxiety for many of us. And sadly, there's something within us that causes us to look down the road with fear rather than with faith. I've also heard it said that God owns a cattle on a thousand years, but he only gives us one hamburger at a time. <laughs> I like that. You know, because it forces us to trust him for each new day that comes along. If you see, if we knew exactly what the future held for us, we would never again need to trust God. For our future would be certain. Faith but in God would no longer be necessary. And then there are some people who lose their joy because they're continually comparing their lives with others. And so their focus is not on their blessings, but it's on their shortcomings. I'm told that one possible downside of the internet is the development of what is called comparative anxiety. The internet has created a networked world that allows everyone to compare everything instantly. How much money you're making compared to people your own age who graduated from the same college you did? Or how many words does your baby know versus millions of other babies their exact age around the world? It's predicted that this ability to benchmark yourself in seconds with others will create an increasing epidemic of comparative anxiety, basically a national wave of insecurity. Is that what's robbing you of your joy, comparing yourself to others? Are those the sort of things that are keeping you from rejoicing? Fear about the future? Fear that you don't measure up to others? I have to say that over the years I've been fascinated with the appearance of angels throughout the scriptures. I've always remembered the first words that, that come out of their mouths whenever they've appeared before the human race. Remember what those words are? They would always say, fear not. Fear not. That's an important word for all of us as we journey through this, especially this COVID-19 pandemic world of ours. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid of the future with its uncertainties. God holds the future in his almighty hands, and God will not let you down. And don't be afraid that somehow your life doesn't measure up. God loves you just as you are. Life was never intended to be lived filled with anxiety, but to be filled with a fullness of joy. That's why St. Paul's words from Philippians are so appropriate when he says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. James Kitchens, in his book entitled Talking to Ducks, explains that there's two major types of joy, internal and external joy. He says internal joy comes from within, but external joy comes and goes with whatever is happening in our environment, the world around us. 
When the circumstances change in one direction, joy comes. When fortune reverses, joy leaves. But internal joy stays with us regardless of our external circumstances. See, we must remember that when we allowed our Lord Jesus Christ to be Lord of our life, He came into the inside. So what's happening on the outside should not affect our insides. What's happening out there should not determine our joy. We don't have to live our lives determined by life circumstances, no. We must remember what those angels have always said, to fear not. He said that to the shepherds, he said that to Mary, he said to Joseph, to Zechariah. He says it to us, to all of God's people. Here's the reason we have light and hope during all the hurdles and the challenges of life. Here's how we can have internal joy in the midst of external despair. You see, a man with nail prints in his hands gave his life for you and for me. So don't worry about your future. God is in control. Don't worry about disappointing your family or your friends. Let them know that you love them. That's the greatest gift you can give them. And that's the gift that God give us. So in the words of St. Paul, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. And do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your request known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. I pray we never forget. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you. Greetings, Grace Congregation members. It is budget time again. With our fiscal year ending at the end of this month, October 31st. As we put our numbers together, we trimmed a lot of the amounts allocated uh, to reflect the reduced needs that we have. But in spite of all that, we still find ourselves $14,000 short. 
In order to fill this gap, we need to have some generous members dig deep and donate significantly. So uh, Grace can continue providing the services to members and this community. Grace is a dynamic force in Culver City, even in these times, especially through Grace Diner, furnishing a meal five evenings a week to more than 200 people each evening. Our support of this function alone is an essential need. No doubt there are some of you who have neglected to send an offering at all uh, without the ritual of an offering plate being passed because we're no longer meeting in the church building. Of course, there is a well-prepared service by email each Sunday. Uh, check it out if it's not part of your Sunday morning activities already. Perhaps now is an opportune time to set up automatic donating through simply giving. Or you can give an offering through the church's website, graceculvert.org, by clicking on giving. There's an option to give one time only or for a chosen frequency, which assures that your donation will happen even if you forget. Please respond to this plea in one form or another if you are able. Raid a separate account or dip into a saving fund that had been set aside for a time like this. Now, indeed, is that rainy day that people talk about. Thank you for your additional gift in whatever amount you find yourselves able. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all people and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into people of righteousness and peace. Your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us to love the world with compassion and constancy that your name may be known throughout the earth. We pray that all painful differences that separate your people be addressed with loving hearts and minds. As we respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors, minister to us so that our faith and hope is renewed. Bring healing and wholeness to those who are hungry, alone, or in pain, especially those suffering with COVID-19. Sustain all our medical workers and caregivers, our first responders, our Grace Diner program, and those who are hardest hit during this pandemic. Be with all who are affected by the fires here in California and the hurricane and flooding in the Southeast. Give peace and comfort to those who have lost loved ones, animals, and property. Keep us strong in loving service as your hands and feet in this hurting world until the day you bear us up to join you and all the saints in heaven. Receive these prayers and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we come to that part of the service that we are calling spiritual communion. Allow. God's grace can work through and transcend electronic communication. Through our spiritual communion, the reality of Jesus and the Father's love in and through the Holy Spirit is operating and present in our hearts and our minds. And so I invite you to pray this prayer with me. I believe that you are truly present in the sacrament of Holy Communion. O oh Lord, I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of the, your body and blood, come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Let me never be separated from you. O oh Lord, may I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. And so, folks, remember that you are in our love and in our prayers. And again, if you need anything, please feel free to email us or call the church office, leave a message, and we will get back to you. And so receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. God bless you.